Hello guys, welcome back to Ellie Talks Tech. It has been a while since we've chatted because I've been traveling the world and rediscovering like Ellie the person, but I had to get restarted because I have been traveling the world with literally one camera and I wanna show you what that is today. So this is like suitcase, carry-on friendly, TSA friendly, security check friendly. Like I've gone through a billion metal detectors just carrying this thing in my bag, passing it through, nobody cares. And it is not what you would expect. I know that you've seen me with like a Canon EOS R6 and the 90D and these big lenses and all this technical stuff and all this big equipment, big gear, all the lights, all the things. I, I haven't used any of that. I've been in five different countries. Um, I've been traveling for six months now. And you know what I've used? This guy. <laughs> yes, I'm a trader, okay? I'm using Sony now. And it's a tiny little camera. It looks like um, the digital or disposable cameras that we had when I was a kid, but it is so much more powerful. So this model right here, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. <laughs> it's the Sony ZV-1. This is marketed to content creators and vloggers. It has a fixed lens. You can use an adapter and add one lens onto it that I have found. I don't own that lens and I'm not in a country where I can get it. So we're with the built-in model here. Um, and I'm gonna show you what it can do, why I love it so much, and why you should maybe consider getting it if you are a business brand content creator, even like I've been using this to film documentary footage as well as content and social media stuff. So it's pretty versatile if you know what you're doing with the basics. And it's better in my opinion than just filming on like a cell phone because even though they have great color and lenses and they pre-color stuff for you, it is maybe one of my deepest pet peeves to drop the high-res footage from my iPhone into Final Cut and it will just like be totally blown out. You just can't do anything with it. So we're gonna take a look at this camera today and uh, yeah, let's get into it. First things first, let's check out these buttons. You can see there's record, you can change the shooting mode, this is the on-off, and this guy right here toggles between other settings. Um, this is also gonna help you with the picture profile. We've also got the speaker so you can hear what you're shooting, and then this is the jack for the microphone that comes with it. I don't have it attached today. Um, then looking at this right here, so this screen does rotate, um, just, you know, a flip, but it also obviously does that. So if you're shooting like this or like that, um, you have some options and you can see what you're doing. Inside, let's just shut this guy. The menu button will pull up all of your standard options for the menu. There are quite a few things in here. So the function button allows you to take a look at all of these settings for exposure. If you press it again, it's going to show you this automatic right here, what it's changing automatically for the settings, if you have it in auto. And you can see that you can change the settings or view more using the other buttons. So you can see like most of the controls are pretty standard to a digital camera. And then we have this tiny grip. Now I will say, my hands, um, like my ring finger ring size is seven and a half. And uh, I don't know, these they're considered smaller hands. I, I have smaller hands than most people holding cameras. This thing is super light, it's less than a pound. Um, and then this you might think is the battery pack. It's not, it's just part of the grip. So you can see, you can grip it like that. Um, it is a right-handed grip. So if you're left-handed, primarily, you've probably learned how to shoot right-handed by now anyway. Then we're gonna look at the bottom here. So this is the one feature I don't love. You actually um, charge the battery while it's in the camera. <laughs> it's this guy right here. It does have the connectors. So if you have like a wall charger for it, great, but I haven't seen one. And then the memory card sits inside. Um, so you plug in the camera and the multifunction jack to charge it. It's the one in the middle here. Yep. Um, this is an additional microphone jack. So if you wanted to connect a different microphone or if you wanted to um, do, there's a mini HDMI here. So there are a lot of ways to connect this camera. And then when you're getting footage off, you can pop the card out or you can do um, the app. So Sony has an app that allows you to send it to your cell phone or device. And then it's just a Wi-Fi transfer. So you connect to the camera's Wi-Fi. And it takes a while though, 
Um, so I personally prefer just pulling the card out and transferring it, but if you're getting it on a cell phone and you don't want that extra step, um, you can definitely do it through the app. We also have this little guy here, which is just for something to hold on to. So you can connect a teeny tiny strap, but it is such a small camera. I'm trying to back up so you can see. I'm 5'6", I'm like a size medium, um, and this is a tiny camera. <laughs> so it's pretty convenient to travel with, and it has a lot of just simple functions. Oh, I also forgot to show you, this is a standard camera mount. So if you have like more gear, if you have a frame or a stand or anything, um, it'll go right on the hot shoe, it'll go right on the jack thing, and I forgot the name of it, I don't know why, um, and it'll be really easy to just put on a tripod as well. So now that you've seen the exterior, let's check out the interior. You can see here, when you turn the camera on, here's your full lens. So it's a 1.8 to 2.8, and it is um, an autofocus. In fact, I'll just hit record here. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Now, the nice thing is that there are some picture settings. So you can do all auto, like autofocus, auto lighting adjust. Um, it'll automatically adjust for the background versus the foreground. It will not focus on my hand right now. <laughs> I'm gonna try and do it this way. Ah, there we go, okay. So it'll blur the background for you if you put it in that picture profile. Um, you can also see here, <laughs> Let me see what I'm shooting in of myself while we're doing this. Okay, so you can see here that it's going to automatically adjust the frame rate, the lighting, the f-stop, all of that, because I have it in auto. I was shooting in an outdoor live event, um, and it was just going to be a lot faster to do it that way. So you can do all of these settings manually or automatically. Um, you can also adjust the picture profile similar to what I've seen in Canon. So like daylight, cloudy, um, outside, inside. You can also do some color temperature settings right inside the camera body. This does do photo and video. I've mostly just used it for video, to be honest with you. Um, when I got this camera, I felt like it was a downgrade because I sold basically all of my belongings before I left the country and um, only picked up this. <laughs> So I'm used to having a bunch of lenses. I'm used to having a bigger camera body. I'm used to it being mirrorless, all this stuff. This guy is supposed to be mirrorless, I think. Um, so I went from like a really big setup to the, just this, and I was upset about it. I'm gonna be just fully transparent. I was upset. This was what was available to me. I'm a woman of faith. This is what I felt I needed to get for my travels. Jesus was right. Um, but I haven't done photography because I'm used to having like options. Uh, I've just been using an iPhone for most of the photos. Uh, though this does do some pretty good photos. I'll actually show you guys some of the photos that it gets, but because it's that fixed focal length for the most part, um, you have to get right up on your subject. And then there is for video, a crop, it shoots in 4k, but there's a pretty big crop and everyone talks about it. I'm sure you've heard about it for this, this model, but, um, it's a really good versatile camera. I, again, I would love to have more lenses. I'm probably going to pick up a different camera for photography, like for uh, wildlife photography or fashion photography. It just depends on what I'm going to need. But for the moment, I've just been using this at an iPhone and they've been working out pretty good. I would not um, do a high fashion shoot with this camera though. Other than that, it's amazing for content. It's amazing for um, vlogging and social media, influencers, brands that want to capture stuff. Even like I said, I've been getting documentary footage on this and I've been very happy with it because it still shoots 4K. Um, you still have all of the editing controls on it. So I can drop this into Final Cut and color it the way I want to or um, do whatever. Now, one thing it does not have is that flat picture profile. So you've seen me cover this in other videos for Canon, C-Log, C-Log 3, that's not a thing for this. Um, I could probably install it, but it's just not worthwhile. It's not. Um, so this is also a great point and shoot. If you are not a professional uh, cinematographer, if you're not a professional photographer, but you want good quality footage, this is a great one to pick up. Um, the price point is pretty mid-range as it goes for 4K cameras and it's available in most countries from what I've seen. It's not, 
it's not available in every country, but most of them, um, or you can get it shipped and it's going to be great for travel. So that's my quick mini review of this. Um, I'm super excited to share it with you. It actually surprised me and continues to surprise me every single day because I didn't think that such a compact camera could give me such powerful results. But I actually love this guy. He's going to stay in my workflow for a long time, um, even when I add a camera to it for photography specifically. So if you have any questions about the Sony ZV-1, you know what to do. Drop it in the comments. I'll answer it probably. Um, if I don't know, y'all are super smart and you'll answer it in the comments too. Like I have gotten help from my comments um, and I appreciate it. Good looking out. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. Welcome back again to Ali Talks Tag. If you would like to check out some of my older videos when I was a darker, sadder human being, but still knew a lot about tech, you can check them out here. And I hope that you will hit the subscribe button and follow along on my joyful journey of creation and professional tech things. Um, what I do on this channel, I was giving you guys like these full tech spec reviews of all of my professional studio equipment. That's still gonna happen. I just don't have any professional studio equipment with me at the moment, that may change. What I will be showing you uh, is tech for brands, tech for influencers, tech for content creators, and then other tech that I pick up along the way. Um, you might get a little bit more information about podcasting. You may get more information about how to film for your business. I don't really know exactly. I do a lot of things. Um, I've really just been building my marketing agency this year and it's been going real good. Uh, so you can also follow me on uh, the Mobile Creative if you want more information about marketing and content marketing and ads. But if we're strictly here for tech, this is the channel to be. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys real soon. And until next time, go create something real cool.